<laughs> You're busy. Okay. <laughs> Let's give a short presentation real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of walk through this kind of quickly here. It's not great depth. Oh, by the way, Liz. Okay, steganography and digital water watermarking. Um, I made part of these slides. The rest of them were uh, borrowed from uh, actually Guy University of Tulsa. So, all right, what is it? It's hiding stuff. We're going to embed stuff. We're going to hide stuff. Kind of like in security auditing, where I kind of hid that text on the front page. That's kind of steganography. It's hidden in plain sight. Okay, so we're going to talk about what all these things are. So it's hidden or concealed, and to write, we are going to know. Just hide it. And basically related to cryptography, we're going to scramble a message, we're going to conceal a message, we're going to make it so we can get the message across with people not knowing about it. Ancient Chinese, I mean, they would literally shave people's heads, put a message on it, grow their hair back, and send them across. Kind of a cool idea. And they got it across there. Uh, Chinese wax balls wrote messages on ink, covered them in wax, and then swallowed them. I guess they kind of do that with heroin now, don't they? <laughs> um, <laughs> Dot successful letters and cover text. Did anyone ever watch Prison Break? Yeah, Someone so. had to watch it. Yeah, the so. whole body tattoo. Yeah, well, that, uh, yeah. 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 We also remember in season one, he gets a letter from his son, and whatever letter was very long. And if you read the right hand column and going down, it was, Dad, I'm fine, whatever, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So, you know, that, it's the same kind of stuff. You're hiding something in something else, okay? Medieval science, they're talking about um, what they do here. Is this one where they, they, every other letter of every other word, where you can read certain things. It's just crazy the way they did it, okay? All these unique ways to hide stuff that people weren't expecting. That's what all this is about, okay? Like this one here. If you read the message, the message sa says, Francis Bacon's own example, the cipher in which the plain text flee is concealed under the cover text, stay until I come to you. So depending on which version of the letter you read, in other words, the font, the message says stay till I come and get you, yet if you read the red one, I guess it says flee, whatever. So now people can do it. Nowadays that would never work because we can't write any longer. So our handwriting sucks. Okay, so there's an example there. Um, Look at all the stuff they banned during World War II. Knitting instructions, ones and zeros, micro dots, invisible inks. I mean, just all this stuff they were banning because they knew people were hiding secrets in it. Crazy stuff. Cross references. Yes. <laughs> List of grades. Yes. Okay. Here's the ultimate example. They actually did it with gold. Uh, where's the name? Aqua Regia. They actually smuggled the gold in another chemical here, and it was a way to basically take it down. It's just crazy the amount of stuff people come up with. If you're kind of forced to do something, you're going to figure out a way to do it. Okay. Computer science, we can all do it with computer science. Trojan horses, Easter eggs. Anyone ever seen an Easter egg in a program before? Yeah. Excel 97. Did anyone ever use that? Excel 97. I got hired to teach. In a, in a, in a, in a, well, I got hired to teach an advanced Excel class. So I'm like, what do I teach advanced Excel? And I didn't even know what they taught in the beginning in Excel. So I went out to teach it, and there was an Easter egg built in where if you went to a sheet, you put certain things in certain cells of a certain form you hit enter, it turned into a 3D flight simulator. And you literally could fly around the street. Oh, I did that, and the students loved it, and that was the best class ever. But that was an Easter egg, okay? Uh, I worked in the software development flight at Tinker, and we were working on a program, what was it called, wasn't on it. Basically for the command and control, it was a database system. But I had this stupid Easter egg, and you went up to help about, and you clicked on the picture three times, and hit the letter U, then it, it was, no one would ever find it. It basically popped up with a list of the developers you know it's written. Starting with like Office 2013, I think Microsoft said they're no longer putting Easter eggs in programs because obviously a flight simulator inside of Excel had to take up some memory. You agree with that? Yeah. Um, it, it might. <laughs> but I liked it because when I was a tinker, you know, obviously we couldn't play games and know it there. So they would actually go and remove Solitaire from our machine. <laughs> so I would just rename it to Word.dll. Renamed Solid.exe to Word.exe. You can still play it. 
it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so you got a hidden point inside. So. Okay, substitution. We could replace redundant or insignificant data. We could go through our text, find something that's repetitive, and replace it. Uh, way back when, when I taken my data structures class for my bachelor's degree, uh, this guy wrote a program, kind of like zip and seven zip, you know, when they're going to compress the file. He wrote one that mathematically could get any file down to 1K. The problem was you could never undo it. <laughs> but I mean, his, he did a presentation on it. He basically was looking for, okay, I'm going to take all the white space and replace it with, you know, letter A. And, you know, it was literally, he had a great, I, he knew it was not going to work backwards, but it was, he just followed a mathematical process. But you get to the point where if you keep replacing too much sooner or later, you can't undo it. You can't get it back. But his literally would, would keep going until your file was like 1K. I don't care what your file was, but it's pretty, it's pretty worthless at that point. Okay, uh, injection says insert cover information into parts of files that are usually ignored. People don't look at this. Okay, and then generation can actually generate text on top of it. We're going to look at some examples. Of, here's something called least significant bits. Okay, Superman 4 with Richard Pryor. Anyone see that? Yeah, that's okay. a long time ago. But Remember that? Remember that when he was stealing like a half a penny? Basically, if you round up your paycheck. So you're getting paid, you know, $52.84.4. cents. Where's that point four go? It just goes away. So Richard Parr took it. That's the least significant bit. Okay? It's not needed. So we could do the same thing in computers. You know, our eyes cannot see differences in colors like a computer can. So why not change it, you know, just slightly to the point where we can't see it, but the computer can detect it. Okay, that kind of stuff. Okay, so they're, they're embedding something into the last bit of a file. You're never going to see it. Okay, all right. Here's an example here where they're actually doing it. You can't see it, but they're, I mean, the color changes so slightly, that you'll never see it, but it actually uses it to embed data. So. Pretty simple stuff, okay? Other examples, you can embed stuff in Waze, you can embed stuff in MP3s, you can embed them in TCP. Yeah, you're gonna learn, at least in the other class, there's something called the urgent pointer, okay? Where you can take a packet of data and you can flag it as urgent or not. Who cares nowadays? Urgent was back when we had high priority packets because the network was slow. But now the network's fast, we don't even use it anymore. Or the don't fragment flag or stuff like that. You could really embed stuff in there. Okay. So lots of different ways you can do it. Let's, I don't know if these are going to work. These links are so old. Let's see if they work. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try, let's try this one. No guarantees here. Okay. Uh, no, that one's not going to work. Uh, let's try the other one. Again, they're so old. Oh. How it works, menu page. I gotta download it. It used to be an online version, but we're not gonna walk through that one. Let's walk through, gotta be what here? Not here. Oh, this one we're gonna do. Okay, we'll do this. This one should still work. Spam it. Okay, I'm going to encode a message, okay? Message is Don will not text. Anything more. Wow. <laughs> Super secret. Okay, I'm going to copy that so I have it. Okay, so I'm going to encode that message and it creates this. Okay, so, all right. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decode it and it goes back to my original message. Okay, now let's prove that it actually did it. So I'm going to encode it again. Now this time, I'm gonna go into the middle here, and I'm gonna change this not, okay, let's, okay, let me get rid of, let's move it, let's remove the V. Well, if I can, why can I not? Yeah, I don't think you can. I can't remove it. No, I should be able to just put it in now. Okay, fine, copy the clipboard. Now can I do it? See if I can change something. Yeah, 
Okay, hold on. Now let's go back. Hold on. So now, no, that was in code. Go back one more. Where is the beginning link? What's it? Oh, there it is. Decode. It's now going to decode this. Okay. Decode. And I got that same message. Do you agree? So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get rid of the H in this. I'm changing one character in this entire message. Okay. So now let's go back where we were. And I'm going to put that H back in there. Oops, it was a lowercase h, wasn't it? Yeah. Actually, let's try it with a capital H. Let's see what happens. Gibberish. Okay, let's put the lowercase h back in there. Just fine. Now, I'm not doing this this year, but a few years back, for the final exam, I sent them a piece of spam generated by this. I said, do what you need to do with it. And no one knew what to do with it. I'm like, seriously. <laughs> If I was to send you, a, you think you could figure this out? I mean, you go to this web page and type in this fan and oh get the results. I mean, literally, like, they kept replying, remove me. What? No. <laughs> right. But that's just an example of something you could do. <laughs> uh, like, this guy's crazy. Stop doing this. Okay. But lots of different ways to hide stuff. Um, so there's a process for analyzing, erasing, decoding, and detection. We're going to do all that kind of stuff. Erase is the easiest. Obviously, you change it. You change one letter, and it's gone. Okay, pretty much gone. It's weird that that entire paragraph was just for that one small sentence. Well, it's spam. It generates a spam message. So you, that spam you guys get, you never know. It could be the you know secret <clears throat> or something. <laughs> Think about it, send it out to a million people, who's going to read it anyway? But the one guy that's expecting it's going to know, aha, this is the answer for whatever. Okay. So decoding is the heart of the part. Hitting information is usually encrypted. Okay. Uh, detecting is the most important part. We need to be able to find this stuff. When I was up in uh, Tulsa, there was a guy from the Tulsa Cyber Crimes Unit there speaking. And they had a known child pornography caught, but he had no child porn. But they were like, this is wrong. The child, he should have some. Yet he was an avid golfer. He had all these DVDs of golf course photos. Turns out every one of the golf course photos had pornography embedded in them. So you would just take the golf course, extract the child porn, and there you go. So they, that's how they found it. So there is real world uses for this stuff. Okay. Military, law enforcement, obviously child pornography, lots of use for this kind of stuff. Digital watermarking. Now, I used to take care of a Bart Connors. He's the Olympic gold medal dude. I used to take care of their website. And I handled all their stuff. And if you look here, this picture has a watermark. And watermark. Can you see that? It says gymnast on her body. He basically gave away all the pictures for free. If you wanted one without the watermark, you pay for it. Kind of like now when your kids go to prom, they get that thing that is either such bad quality or it says proof over it or something. And you pay the money and you get the real one. Okay, same kind of thing. Watermarking is really just integrity. We know this is somebody else's work at this point. With Photoshop, could we remove it? Yes, but it'll probably take us a while. Now it's like a type Yeah, they're just changing all kinds of stuff. Okay, the goal is watermarking, not to impair. We still want you to be able to see the image, but you know, if you want to keep it or own it, then you're gonna have to pay for it. That's basically what it is. Okay, uh, they just talk which one's hard to do there. State of Archive has lots of software on it. You can go up and play with it. The ones I'm going to use for you are 15 years old. They will crash on you, but they're about the best out there. Okay. We've tried many of them. We tried. There's none that are reliable more than this. Yes, I mean, none of them are great, but it's just, you know, they were. Yes. Okay, we're going to demonstrate this in just a second, and all these tools fit on a floppy disk. Here it is. This was a USA Today. Lately, Al Qaeda operatives have been sending hundreds of encrypted messages that have been hidden in files on digital photographs on eBay. The volume of messages has nearly doubled in the past months, indicating that basically Al Qaeda is hiding data there. Now, what I did was this obviously, this car is no longer there. But if you look at this car, what eBay started to do to prevent this was see in the bottom right hand corner. I know it's hard to see, I really couldn't make it any bigger, but there's a little picture of a camera. 
back in 2003 or four, whenever this happened, whenever you would upload something to eBay, they would modify it slightly by putting a watermark on the front. They all pretty much still do it, but the watermark is normally non visible any longer. But the point is, we saw by editing it in any way, what happens to the embedded data? Come on. So you can no longer hide pictures in eBay because obviously they overwrite it. Yeah, that's no longer there anymore. Uh, says, authorities have also investigated information from detainees, says Al Qaeda members or possibly Bin Laden or hiding messages in pornographic files. So just lots of different ways. What would prevent me, I mean, think about it. If you want to hide your checkbook data, embed it in a picture. Who's going to know to look at a picture? And you can mail it to your wife or your husband, or your son, or mail it to yourself. No one. Right. Yeah, no one's even going to know about it. Okay. Okay, this is used when it's important to conceal the fact that communication is happening, and there's a lot of programs that can do it. And there's a lot of links on here you can go read about it if you like. Again, there are sources on there. So. Okay, and there's more. All right, let's walk through this demo real quick. Okay, up under software needed, there's something called stable tools. You should get it. And here it is. Okay, there inside here the, the file called usage. I tell you exactly how to use this tool. The exact commands upon and everything. So potentially you can't screw this up. Potentially. I agree that we'll include the word potential. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the command prompt. I'm going to take steg detect. I'm going to run it. The command line and it came up and told me that church with Mindy potentially has something hidden in it. It was hidden with JP Hyde and think of the asterisk as kind of like the probability mark. One is low, two is more, three is more, so on and so forth. But don't believe it. They suck. They're, they're, it's not very reliable. And some of the work you're all going to work with, it'll even come up with negative, but it'll still have something embedded. So if I'm working with a bazillion files, yeah, I might go with you know the ones with the most asterisks, but that's not always a good indicator. Like if I go in and change this command to a one, I'll probably get a different result. Now it's negative. Yeah, we know there's something in it. Okay. If I change this to a 10, obviously, hey, now we even more think there's something in it. So really a five is the good way to go. That'll give you a good idea. Now we're going to take steg break. A stick break, what that's going to do for us is going to break it, and it tells me that Church with Mindy had something hidden using JP Hyde version 5, and the password is church. Now we know there's something in it, and the password is church. So I'm going to use our handy dandy little tool here, JPSH Win. I'm going to accept this. I'm going to open up a JPEG. I'm going to open up Church with Mindy. Before we do this, let's actually look at Church with Mindy. Okay, does anyone see Mindy anywhere? I mean, I mean, she is visible. It's hard to see her, but if you look very closely, you should be able to see her. Anyone see Mindy yet? No, no, it, it's Mindy with her dad. She's sitting right there with her dad. Oh. I mean. We're going to recover it. It's going to be hard to see it, but if you look close, you should be able to see her. Okay. Sure. So now I'm going to open it. Now I'm going to seek. We know the password is church. Okay. And I'm going to call this Mindy. Okay. I'm just guessing that it's a JPEG. Okay. So here's what you should have seen. You ready? There's Mindy. She's right there on the bench. Wow. Right next to her dad. And tiny. That's. That's she was kind of hidden, I mean, a little small. But the point is that is embedding the other photo, and you didn't even see it. Okay. So it's kind of a cool feature the way that works. Now, um, what if I extracted that and I didn't know it was a JPEG? Is there any way I could have figured out it was a JPEG? Look at the heads, you all know the signatures now, because I embedded everything. I embedded text files, I embedded documents, I embedded pictures, I embedded everything. So you're gonna extract whatever you find and you have to figure out what it is. So does everybody understand in lab two how to figure out what this is? So if I was to take this file right here and dump it right on top of Hex Workshop, 
going to come up and say, oh, JFIF. Remember that? So don't sit there and say it was a JPG and it won't open because it's corrupt. Then you look in here, oh, it says percent percent PDF. Oh, maybe it's a PDF. <laughs> maybe. Okay. You do have to do that. Everybody understand that aspect of it? Yeah. Okay. Let's embed something now. We could also keep guessing at the result. You could. You could literally sit there for days. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to download a picture of the sun. I'm going to find a Let's go a pretty large one. All right. So which one? Which, you want sun.jpg. This only works in JPEG, by the way. Which sun you want me to use? You want me to use this one or this? I like this. Uh, it's not that big. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So I'm going to save this image as. I'm going to save it in my desktop. Digital forensics. I'll save it in steganography. I'm going to call it the sun. Uh, JPG. Okay, easy enough. Y'all agree? I just saved the image. Now let's look. I should have a file. <clears throat> oh, it's in the Stego Tools directory. Okay, it's right there. It's called the Sun, and now we have a picture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up this wonderful tool. I'm going to open a JPEG. I'm going to open up the Sun. I'm going to hide something in it. I'm going to use Church. I'm going to embed, let's embed, how about, how about a PDF? <laughs> so I'm going to embed a PDF on the sun. It might burn up, but we're going to do it. I'm going to do save as, we're going to call it sun2.jpg. Okay, it's it. So now if we look at this, let's look at the sun. Okay, there's the one I downloaded. And there's the one I embedded in it. Is there any difference? There's the one I downloaded. There's the one I embedded in it. Now there's a PDF in it. It's literally in the sun. It's a single pixel. You got like Let's see what the actual sun looks like. There's that's what we embedded in it. Okay, if you look in Hex Workshop, the Sun 2 looks exactly like a GIF file or JPG file. Yeah, it's a JPEG file. There's no difference. And the funny thing is, okay, oh, how is it yes, it's, it's small. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. It's actually smaller now because what it did is it went through, found some redundant data, <laughs> stuck this stuff in it, and just got rid of something. It's like, I didn't need this crap. Well, it's duplicate or whatever. It's not neat. But isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, actually, I just, I believe that because I remember when we took, when we just removed a whole bunch of data from JPEGs, this will work fine. Yes. You know so I mean? I'm going to run Steg Detect again. Steg Detect. Now, you'll notice, see that corrupt JPG data? You see that? You're going to get a lot of those. All that means is it's looking for a specific signature in the file and it's not finding it. So don't worry about that. Don't say, I can't complete the assignment, the data's corrupt. No, the data's fine. So it says, Church of Mindy's got something in it. The Sun has something in it. Mindy.jpg is negative, and Sun Two has something in it. So the Sun, so the one I just made has something in it, and the original has something in it. Oh, do we want to check the Sun to see if there's something in it? So let's look at. <laughs> now we're gonna do steg break. Again, don't worry about the bad stuff. Okay, Sun Two and Church of Mindy both got something in there hidden with Church. Now, if I hit Control C, you'll see it's going through a dictionary attack. It's on the word Neely right now. If I do it again, this can, now it's on Actresses One. This is actually using the John the Ripper dictionary to do this. We're going to learn about that next week. But you'll notice it's going through this dictionary attack. So what happens if I hide something and you don't have the right dictionary word? It's never going to find. I actually did that a few years ago on accident. On accident. I didn't do it this time. <laughs> so. Now, how am I going to get out of here? It keeps going. If I hit Control C twice, it stops. Okay? Everybody got that? So if you want to see its progress, do Control C. Now, what you need to do, all the files you're working with, you need to put them into the stake tools directory. 
What I recommend you do is you're going to have to work with multiple file sets. For each file set, just copy state tools into that file set. That way you can run state tools in multiple directories, you know what I mean? Don't put everything in the state tools because there's 9,600 files. You'll be running it one time in one huge directory. It's easier. So you have file set one, file set two, three, four, whatever. Copy state tools into one of them, copy it into the second set and the third set. That way you can run them separately. Maybe make some more progress. You can actually run two of them at the same time. So how many files do you, okay. what, what is the end product of this? Okay, I'm gonna show you that here in a second. Okay, does everybody understand how that works? Any big issues there? Okay. All right, uh, one other thing I wanna show you, there's a tool called wget, which is up there as well. What wget is, it downloads websites. You can actually use it to download YouTube videos, not a problem. Uh, a prime, a real world example of the use of this tool, Laura Lewis, one of our students who went to Tulsa, uh, their cyber crimes unit is above Tulsa's forensics lab. In other words, forensics lab bottom floor, Tulsa cyber crimes top floor. And the students kind of do an internship up there while they're learning the weapon help and do stuff. Well, Laura went up there one day and in the back corner of the room, there's a guy with his, you couldn't see what he was doing, but he was there all day long, every day. He was sitting in the corner, looked like he wanted to kill himself. He, he was a cop, he really hated life. So one day Laura was really nice, really talkative. She goes, hey, what's going on? And he's like, I'm downloading child porn. He had to download every image from this child porn website to save his evidence. Can you imagine downloading all this child porn day in and day out rather than it? So Laura's like, why don't you use WGET? And he's like, what? I'm gonna show you how to use it. it literally 30 seconds done, the entire website's downloaded, you never had to look at a single picture. So real world uses for this stuff. So Laura was like, I mean, I don't know about you, it would freak me out. But okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna go to WGET, you just unzip it, you don't have to install these, just unzip them and they run. I'm gonna go into the bin directory, and I'm gonna go back to the command prompt again. I'm gonna go WGET, www.rose.edu. Check, it's done. I got the Rose website. Did I not get it then? So it's SSI, uh, you're right, I didn't get it. Okay, hold on, let me go. HTTPS, um, you're right, they might have encrypted it. Fine, let me get a different website. Give me one that's not encrypted. Uh, MSN. <laughs> MSN, there we go, I got MSN. Okay, and you'll notice I have a file here called index.html. And there it is. There's the MSN website. But is it missing something? No. What we got was just the index page. Okay, we did not get the whole website. Well, there's an option in here, which I always tell you to figure out, but the option is dash R, which means recursive. I'm not gonna get the whole website because this will literally go forever. So I'm gonna start it and you'll see now it's downloading the entire website. You see that? Page after page, link it, it's following all the links on the page and starting to get them all. And I stopped it because I don't want the whole website. Now if you go in here and look, you'll see I actually got that, plus I got the robots file for our search engines. And I started to get some of the settings for English. Actually see if I can, it looks any better. Now it still looks the same. I didn't get any images yet. But use the dash R and that will recursively get the website you need. Don't do it manually. Every semester, someone's going to say, you know, I haven't downloaded down the files for the entire week, and I'm not done yet. I'll do this. You'll literally have them in seconds. Any questions on WGET? Uh, so what is the end product? You don't see, we ain't got that yet. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording, then I'm going to actually walk through the assignment with you. Uh, is this the assignment? No, it's not the assignment.